If you like this video, please consider supporting the Otokana channel over on Patreon. Thank you. In this episode, we are taking a close look at the Kingman Green Turquoise Genuine by Daniel Smith. You remember Kingman Green from the last episode of the Daniel Smith's Color Showdown in which I compared it with the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. Kingman Green Turquoise, the mineral, is mined in the Mineral Park Mine, 14 miles from Kingman in Arizona. It comes in a range of teal colours from the classic blue turquoise to the more greenish turquoise colour. Kingman Green Turquoise Genuine itself is a cool greenish turquoise that has no shimmer or sparkle. It is also a noticeably lower tinting strength than the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. It is also harder to rewet than, say, the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise and other easy to rewet Primatec colours. Dennis Smith's website says Natural Kingman Green Turquoise Genuine captures the magic and the mystery of the ancient southwest in a subtle greenish turquoise. It is mined near Kingman, Arizona, which lies along a Native American trade route. And their Facebook page also says, Natural Kingman Green Turquoise Genuine is a rich green making it a wonderful colour for landscapes and as a base for mixing other greens similar to Viridian but less blue. It is a very expensive colour being a Series 5 colour classified as excellent in light fastness, transparent, non-staining and granulating. We are back and this is Kingman Green Turquoise Genuine. It is a dark to mid-tone green that is heavily granulating with no sparkle. It does have this little bit of a chalky feel to it, not when you're painting it, but once it dries it has this kind of chalk paint-ish colour. It is a fantastic colour to create gradated washes with because you cannot cauliflower this colour. It loves being in lots and lots of water. And as you can see, gradated wash is no problem on any of the different paper textures. Kingman Green is classified as transparent and I don't quite know because I can see some deposit on the black line and if you want to take a closer look and see the deposit for yourself then you can check out the high res scans of every test sheets I make for each video over on my Patreon which is patreon.com forward slash autocano. So there is some deposit so I wouldn't call this transparent, I would call this semi-transparent. In terms of lifting, it's classified as non-staining and it's a super easy colour to lift. So even if you put it in the wrong place, don't worry, it's going to come off the paper super easily. In terms of glazing, you can see clear glazing layer. However, because it's such a heavily granulating colour, whether you want that granulation to be more obvious or not is entirely down to you. Even though it is a heavily granulating colour, actually the layers don't make the granulation look weird like some other colours we've seen on this series do. So I would say yes, it's good to glaze with. In terms of gauzing, when you gauze the green colour really really squishes into the fibres of the gauze and create this intense green that happens along the lines where the fibres were. However, with the colour intensifying, the chalkiness of this colour kind of comes through more. So that's just something to look out for if you want like a f nice intense green. You're not going to get that. You're going to get a more chalkier colour. In terms of salt, it doesn't react at all with salt. So I wouldn't recommend using it unless you're looking for this particular kind of texture. Otherwise, avoid using salt. Water blooms, it does bloom, you can see the feathering happening, but it doesn't give a pretty texture by any means. Now let's take a look at colour mixes and let's just remind you, the 12 colours I always mix the main colour with and this is the result of that. I do think it's a good mixing colour 
It plays nicely with everybody, which is lovely. But the green flocculation does keep its color when mixed with other colors. So like in the quinacridone rose, cadmium yellow, all over you see this green happening. So it's not like the blue appetite genuine where it kind of chameleons itself and changes the flocculation color with whatever color you're mixing. You're going to get green flocculation here and I think it's down to your taste as to whether you will find this kind of granulation happening pretty or not. Let's have a look at Kingman Green with other colors. My brain kind of fuzzed out one moment and I did put Kingman Green down here so just please ignore that. So the colors I tried were the Fuchsite Genuine from the previous episode which is just too light and too sparkly to compare to the Kingman Green. Then I tried Diopside, which we will have later in this series, but I watered it down because Diopside is actually quite intense color and it's a little bit too bright green for the Kingman Green. Then I tried Terravert, looking for something a little bit, bit more muted, but I think it's too muted. Then I tried Rare Green Earth, which is even more muted. Then we'll skip the fact that my brain fuzzed out. And then we have the Holbein Viridian, which is too intense a green. Holbein Permanent Green number two. Not quite sure what I was thinking there. It's completely different color. Then the Holbein Terra Vert, which is more of a sap hookers kind of green than the Kingman Green is. Holbein's Green Gray, Snellia's Hookers Green. Sennelia's Chromium Green Oxide, Sennelia's Green Earth, Sennelia's Sap Green, and these are all just too green or too muted green. Then I tried the Dennis Smith Cobalt Turquoise, trying to look for a bluer color, and also the Dennis Smith Cobalt Teal Blue. So as you can see, there's a lot of green teal options, but it's actually quite hard to get this particular shade of Kingman Green. So if you are looking for this particular color, then I suggest biting a bullet and paying for the Kingman Green. However, I do question how versatile this green is. I do think if you mix like the rare green terra vert kind of colors with a little bit more blue in it, then you'll probably get something similar. I just realized that I hadn't put Sleeping Beauty on this chart. So here's Sleeping Beauty as well. And the two colors are very different again. But whereas the Sleeping Beauty is actually really nice to use as sky color, the Kingman Green, I think, is less versatile. So personally for me, if I had to pick between these two colors, then I would go for the Sleeping Beauty just because A, it's a nice color in my view, and I know I'll be able to use this color more often than the Kingman Green. And the other thing is, we have such a huge wide variety of different greens that are a lot, lot cheaper than the Kingman Green. So for me, I would prefer to buy a couple of tubes of different color greens than have this one tube of heavily granulating green. So that was Kingman Green Turquoise. What did you think of this color? Me personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this color. Sleeping Beauty definitely steals my heart more than this color and I don't have this on my palette. Just because the heavy amount of granulation can be a little bit unwieldy sometimes. But if you like heavy granulation and you are looking for this particular kind of green and you don't mind forking out the high series five cost, I definitely do think that for the money because Sleeping Beauty and Kingman Green is the same series five price, I would go for the Sleeping Beauty over the Kingman Green. However, from that episode where we compared the two colors together, I know there are some diehard Kingman Green fans as well. So if you could let us know down in the comments below, like why you love this color so much and what you use the color for. And if you think I'm wrong that the Sleeping Beauty is more versatile than the Kingman, then by all means do let me know and let me know how you find the Kingman Green more versatile. If this video was useful and interesting to you, then please do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. 
Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!